Hey everyone, welcome to another Birdies Conversation. Today we are gonna be talking about the value of family. Uh, Angel City has partnered with Birdies for this talk series to discuss growing professionally and personally. Today, I'm your host, Jennifer Pransky, head of content for Angel City. Um, and I wanna introduce our amazing guest for today that is going to help us explore this topic. She played for the University of Tennessee, then with two different clubs in Iceland. Now she's Angel City is her home, the pride of Cincinnati. She <laughs> is our defender, M.A. Vignola. Welcome, M.A. What is up, everybody? I'm so excited to talk about this. It's going to be dope. Yes. Well, first, we want to do. I want to do one quick random question. Can you tell us about the origin of M.A. and what it stands for and how you got that nickname? Oh, goodness. M.A. It's just short for Mary Alice. Um, I got that nickname pretty soon after I was born, actually, from our next door neighbors, who pretty quickly became part of our family. And he, my parents just told me, he took one look at me and was like, mm, I'm not going to call it Mary Alice. We're just going to go with M.A. And my parents were like, okay, <laughs> that works. And ever since then, it's just stuck. Nice, nice. I like that. Yeah. I love that it, the person who gave it to you is part of the family now. So that's-, that's He is, way. he is. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's kind of let's kind of dive into our topic here. So, you know, I think the definition of family, that word, you know, it's constantly changing, it's ever expanding. Um, and I think it means something different to everyone. So that's what we're going to talk about a bit today and um, and our experiences with it. And hopefully that maybe relates to someone or, uh, you know, just keeping the options open for everything that this topic can can mean. So when you think of the word family, what, what does that mean? Who, who is the, who is in that group for you? Um, for me, when I think of family, I think of just a really big support system, kind of anyone who's in your corner, pushing you, people who believe in you, even in times when you might not believe in yourself. Like, I think those are, that's who you can call family, the people that you can really just rely on to be there no matter what. And I think that the family doesn't have to be your close, close family, like the people who you were you're genetically related to. Like, I don't think that just explains who family is. Like, I think it's much more beyond than that. Like you kind of create your own. No. Um, and let's, let's get into your personal family story a little bit, a little bit more. So you, you were adopted by some amazing people at birth. Um, can you kind of walk me through that? Like, tell me a bit about your, you know, your childhood and how that, how that all happened. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know, that I was adopted until around the age four or five. Um, and even then, like, I really couldn't even process that. Like, I really didn't know what it meant. Um, I just remember my mom coming up to me and sitting me down and saying, like, okay, like, you are loved by us no matter what. And we just want you to know, like, we're not your biological parents. And I feel like I don't really remember feeling anything. Like, I was like, you are my parents. Like, you raised me. You're why I am the way I am right now. Like, that's just how I saw it. Um, and yeah, that's just kind of the beginning of it. Mm. Um, I mean, at four, do you remember a lot of that? I mean, at four years old, I feel like I don't remember much from yeah. that age, to be very honest, but like how much no. of it do you really remember? Or is it more that you just remember them telling you about the experience? The one memory that I vividly remember is my mom coming to class with me and sitting me down with a bunch of my classmates. And we were sitting on the show and tell chair and my mom read a book to my class about a little girl named Alice who was adopted. And I remember that very vividly. And that's still a story that me and my mom talk about to this day. Um, and just kind of really makes me think of no matter, like she was my mom. She was my mom, no matter what. Um, and she always, she was always there for me. Um, and definitely one of my biggest supporters that I definitely took for granted along the way. Yes. And, and in the time since then, and I guess, you know, as an adult now, how do you think being adopted affects how you think about yourself or how, how you see the world? Like, how does it, how does it change your perspective on things? It's interesting. And I think it's really interesting because this is the piece where I feel like I'm trying to figure out most in my life right now, um, I kind of felt like I saw adoption at first as kind of a negative and it kind of um, made me feel insecure and I had self-esteem issues and I kind of really didn't know like where I fit in just because me being, I am mixed race, 
I'm 50% black, 50% white, but my parents are white and I was raised in a very white community. Um, had the opportunity to go to some great private schools that my parents put me in, but there was a minority of black people. And that's just kind of how I feel like I was raised in more of kind of the white culture. Um, but I knew that I wasn't all white. I knew there was another piece, but I just didn't really know what was missing. Um, so I think a lot of my early journey through middle school and high school, it's tough just because I was always being asked like, you know, why don't you look like your parents? Why don't, why aren't you the same color? Why are you darker skinned? And I just kind of made it a negative and I got to kind of push that aside and was just like no like I am white like I didn't accept the fact that like I am mixed race like I kind of felt like I had to prove to people that I was someone that I actually wasn't so it was tough mm -hmm. it was tough and I'm still kind of figuring that out as we go well you, you mentioned that you know you sort of saw it as a negative so is it sort of that those questions you, you perceived those questions about yourself as ones that were sort of like attacking or or considering you less than so like yeah. are you at a point where you've got where you feel like that's changed do you feel like you see all these things about you as a positive and and i guess at what point did you were you able to flip that negative into understand thinking of it as a positive yeah um i feel like those feelings were very recent like the more positive feelings of like, I feel like that's kind of where I'm coming into now in my, at my 24 years of age, took me 24 years to figure it out. I'm still figuring it out, but um, I don't know. I feel like, hmm, I just feel like kind of going through those stages, middle school, high school time, like I feel like I felt like I was pushing people away um, when I didn't need to be. And instead of really accepting my family and knowing like they unconditionally love me, I kind of pushed them away and kind of took over myself and kind of buried my feelings and buried everything that I was feeling inside and not letting it out, which made everything much more difficult. So now today I'm trying to accept my emotions and understand that what I feel is okay. And that there are people that are out there willing to listen and understand. And I think that's really important for people who were adopted and still trying to figure it out that they can talk to somebody and there are people who understand the same thing and know what they're going through and they're not alone. Yeah. I feel like this should be a whole separate conversation, but I do want to touch on it a little bit right now, but like how, you know, you talked about how you're a mixed race, but your parents are both white. How did you connect or find, find connection to, to the, you know, the part of you that's black, like how, as an adopted yeah. child, like how do you, find connection to your heritage yeah um I'm still kind of figuring that out same thing um I feel like I really kind of came in touch with that side of my heritage kind of in college I was around a lot more types of people I was um more open and willing to get to know people um so I think college really did help um and just kind of got me away from everything that I felt like was kind of holding me back and like that has nothing to do with my parents or any decisions that they have ever made that has nothing to do with them it's just that I kind of felt like me being able to get away kind of let me feel what I wanted to feel that makes sense I mean you need your own time yeah. to that's when you I mean I don't know so much happens in college and where you're just finally trying yeah. to figure yourself out and um, yeah I love that you're still figuring all of this out because even <laughs> I, you know not twice your age, but close to it. And I feel like I still figure things out all the time. Um, even when, I mean, especially in regards to family. I mean, so, you know, God, families are just always so different and they come in all these different shapes and sizes. And, you know, I, I don't think that there is such a thing as a normal family. I don't really know what that means. I think it's a silly term in some ways. <laughs> um, you know, from my perspective, so... Yeah. So my parents divorced when I was, or separated when I was about, I want to say fifth or sixth grade or something like that. And, um, we were living in a small mountain town and my dad just built a house next door. <laughs> so, which like is not usually what I feel like happens. And eventually my family moved to another city and my dad came with us and all through up until I went to college, my dad was over for a Friday night dinner at my house every single, you know, every single Friday we would, we would do that. And, you know, with my brother, my mom, my dad and myself. And so, 
I feel like it was, it felt a lot different than a lot of my other friends who had divorced and separated parents where they didn't like each other. They, everything had to be super, super separate. But for us, it was still sort of yeah. this blended family, even after my father remarried, you know? Um, but it's still, it's very cool. you know, I still feel like there were like m- relationships that had to be managed in there, you know? And, um, but it didn't seem strange to me. Like it didn't, I never yeah. once was one of those kids that was like, mommy and daddy, please get back together. I was like, nope, that never really <laughs> came up. <laughs> wow. That's really yeah. cool. Um, How did you kind of feel like, even though your parents were divorced, but he was still very much in your life, but you knew they were divorced. Like, how did that, how did you guys go about that as kids? I think oh, to be very honest, like they fought a lot when they were together. And so there was sort of, I think this relief when they decided to separate that, Oh, I don't have to hear them fight anymore. And that was yeah. true because then the time that we all spent together was actually really great. Um, and when he, my, my dad and mom were together, it was, it was always really nice. And I feel like that was the relationship and the example that I wanted to see. I didn't want to see the fighting example. Like I, I feel like yeah. they were better parents not being married. Um, I think that's what a lot of people need to realize sometimes when they're struggling with relationships is, you know, what are you showing your kids is a fan, it, it, our parents and what are, what's a family. And it's not one that stays together because you think you have to, like there's ways to love each other <laughs> from that without living in the same house. Uh, but it's, it's, I know I realize that's tough and I'm sure it was really tough on my parents at the time that my brother and I, at times when my brother and I didn't see that side, but I really praise them for the job they did of making us feel loved and feeling like we had two strong parents that just were better apart in that way. But that's, you know, I mean, we sort of talked about like our, you know, the people that raised us, <laughs> you know, from <laughs> children as child children, but you know, we kind of touched on, you talked about it earlier, like there's family that you choose, you know, there's the people and the support system that we build around us. And that's mentors, that's friends, that's, um, you know, people who are like parental figures to us, all that kind of stuff. So what, what is the importance of that group for, for you? And has it, you know, do you feel like you've just been building it? Have, are you, you know, constantly building it and changing and all that kind of thing? Tell me about the family you're yeah. you choose. Um, I feel like I was actually thinking about this pretty recently. Um, and I've definitely gotten in touch with a couple um, past coaches that I had growing up um, recently that have really shaped who I am as a person and a player today. Um, and I think it's very interesting because I feel like you don't really realize how there they are for you until they're gone. Um, Mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of them, like, yeah, there are a couple that like, you know, they're there for you. And like, you know, that no matter what, like you can go to them for anything and turn for them. But then there's the ones who you might not talk to for five, 10 years, but you know, if you need something, you can still reach out to them. And I think, um, for me, that's a lot of my coaches that I had in the past or trainers that just believed in me and times where I felt like I didn't believe in myself and times I just felt like I wanted to quit or give up they were always there and so what are the times you reach out do you feel like is there a balance between you reach out when you when stuff's not going right (laughs) do you also want to reach out when you just want to tell them something amazing that happened Um, yeah what are the times that you connect with those people yeah, I mean, the, the biggest one for me this past year was when I made my debut in the NWSL playing Mexico. I feel like that was a time when I really reached out to people and I was like, I did it. Like, I actually did it. Like, it took time, but I did it. And uh, I like that after that day and after that game, like, I just felt so many emotions. And like, that was when I was really feeling the presence of people that have been in my life and are still in my life. Because it just realized, like, NWSL was the dream for me. And sometimes there were really days where I felt like that wasn't going to happen. Or if I, or I'm not pushing myself enough for it to happen. And now it's like, I'm looking back. I'm like, these t- these people were on this journey with me this whole time. And they're still here. So it's really cool. Let's talk about the season maybe a little bit. Did you, who were you leaning on this year? Because, look, you, Ooh. the dream came true. You, you're on an NWSL team. But then right at the beginning of the season, we're dealing with some injuries that took you a long, a long time to come back from. So who, what was the family and the support group for you like during that time to get back to even being able to touch the field? Yeah, um, that is definitely difficult because um, not only with the injury, but being in a whole new place, 
Um, and my family is still all the way in Ohio. You know, it was, it's a whole new team. I didn't really know anybody. Um, and it was hard at, at times, like there were times when I felt alone and, uh, I didn't know if I was going to get through it because six months being out with an injury is a long time. And then coming and finally being able to have one more step of the dream. And it's like, Oh, I can't do it. Like I gotta get the surgery to get everything fixed up and ready to go. But I think it really opened me up in different ways to kind of reach out to different people um, for their help and for their support because I felt like I always had a struggle being, um, what's the word, just being willing to let people in. Um, I felt like I always had a guard up sometimes and I feel like I still do and that's one of my weaknesses that I'm still trying to deal with. But um, I think really just relying on teammates and coaching staffs and the people that are here with you at the here with you physically like that that's really what I leaned on um Mm -hmm. and it's amazing how the Angel City family became a family so quick like it is it's crazy yeah I love that we say that all the time you know Angel City family like it just it roll you know it it sounds like a marketing Mm -hmm. phrase but really I do (laughs) It's actually true that we it is you know, I don't know because we're all trying to it's 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 crazy because we, we're trying to build this thing from scratch in some ways you know you guys are the first we're all that figuring it out together yeah and you know so we're seeing the good and the bad and the ugly of each other <laughs> <laughs> everything um, everything and I mean that's what family is for me a lot is that it's it's through the worst of it they're gonna yeah. You, you're stuck with me. You know, it's, that's yeah. the thing, right? You, you've decided that you have this bond, whether it's through genetics or because you've built a relationship and it's like, all right, you know, I'm going to be here and not every day is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to fight through it together. It's what we got to do. Yeah. And, and it's what you said. It's like when, when a call needs to be made, if I don't talk to you for three years, and mm-hmm. out of the blue, I call you when you need something. It's like, it's because I know you'll be there for me. And it's okay that we haven't, you know, been around for however long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's hard to find. It's hard to build. It is. It is. It's like those certain people just get it. They just yeah. get it. They understand yeah. kind of what you're going through. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And a lot of that is through, I think, your experience. And so this experience of so of us trying to build this team together, a lot of you, the other shared experience that you guys had of a lot of you coming to Los Angeles and living in a new city for the first time. I mean, I love LA, but I can't, it's not easy. It's huge. Ooh. It's got to be scary huge. and daunting. How do you feel like you built, you've got, you know, your family in Ohio, you've got like old teammates, old coaches, but how did you build a Los Angeles family? Oh, that's tough. I mean, still question. doing it probably we all are right still really still doing it um I think the struggle for me was um kind of just getting out there and trying new things um and I think now I'm starting to do it a lot more but I felt like I kind of kept myself in like this little bubble um I'm not really sure why maybe anxious feelings I'm not really sure but I feel like now that I'm finally feeling and doing things in the moment. Like, I feel like I want to go out and do and see more things. So, and I've involved myself in cycling. I've been taking a cycle bar class. It is actually very fun. And it, I don't know, it's just crazy how I feel like I can step in one spot or one place and it feels safe. And that's how I feel doing cycle bar. It's like I bring teammates with me. I brought Didi along with me the other day and we had just a blast we're doing it again this week. Like it's just trying new things and meeting new people. And they don't always work out. You probably gonna hate mm-hmm. me for this, but oh, we had beach we day. Can we talk about beach it. day? <laughs> Can we not talk about beach day? <laughs> no. <laughs> I got wrecked by a wave. Wrecked. I was so excited and no yeah and, but look you tried it you were there with, with a lot of teammates you're like yes I will try this and you came out of it learning each day not for you very true very true but it is fun we all get to try new things together like that's what made it fun that's what made it really fun and yeah. uh, 
but do not underestimate the power of the water because, oh my goodness, it is, it's tough. It's tough. Kind of have a healthy respect for, for the ocean, for sure. Out here. <laughs> Mother nature. Mother nature. Oh, yeah. But I see like there's, you know, there is fa- like family as it pertains to your professional life. And, um, you know, what, what do you expect with, from family and chosen family when it comes to like supporting your, your professional dreams? Like, do you just want, I need you to be my cheerleader every single day? Or are you someone who's like, no, I need people who are going to like set me straight and level with me and tell me the honest stuff, even if it's hard. Like what, what is it that you look to from, for professional support? I feel like it changes, like, and it also depends on, like, the person that you have the relationship with and kind of how your relationship works. Like, for example, one of my first club coaches, um, me and him did not get along very well in the beginning, nor did my family like him because he was just very hard, direct. Like, if you weren't given 100%, he was going to get on your butt for it. Like, and, and I feel like for me, that was tough because I felt like, I was always a little more on the sensitive side as a kid. And um, I kind of took a lot of the stuff he said to heart. Um, and then I just remember my dad sitting me down and saying, like, look, you know you can play at this level. You know what kind of player you are. Like, you need to listen to your coach. And so it kind of became a thing that every day before games or practices, my dad would say, all right, what are you going to do today? And I would say, have fun, play hard, and listen to my coach. And... Um, after a while, like it just kind of became a routine and I started to let him in more and realize that like, okay, he's not being mean because he doesn't like me or he doesn't think I'm a good player. He's being hard on me because he knows what kind of a player I could be and the potential that I have. So he pulled a lot of things out of me that I didn't even know that I had. Um, And he's a big reason of why I got to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Well, and, the, and what your dad did do for you in that situation, because like as a kid, mm-hmm. you could have just given up on that relationship with your coach, oh, but yeah. the support you had at home, helping you through, like guiding you through that. And I love that. Oh, it's yeah. almost like your daily affirmation, right? It's like, I'm going to have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's the first thing I got to tell myself. Have fun. Just have fun. Don't overthink mm-hmm. it. And that was the one thing that my parents always wanted me to nail in my brain because I knew I was an overthinker. I overthink everything. But even though sometimes I wasn't listening to my parents, I feel like I can finally understand them and why they said the things that they did to me like growing up. And I'm like, now it clicks. Now it clicks. How does it, how does the team, and I I mean, you know, I don't mean me as part of that team as like our organization, Mm -hmm. but as a professional like playing team like the players and coaches like how how does why and how does the team need to be like a family or do they not family family's hard because like family doesn't just come with a snap of a finger like I feel like sometimes family takes time to grow um you know there's teams that you get on with a bunch of your teammates and it just clicks and it just works and it's amazing and you guys are great together and you got great athletes and it just works but then you have other scenarios where um you're still trying to figure each other out and figure out what works and what doesn't work. And it just kind of, it feels like everything's not clicking, but as long as you know, you have each other and you can rely on each other, it's It's, it will take time, but eventually it will work. And that's the hardest thing too, is like, I feel like with, um, kind of what we're going through in angel city and just kind of the growing and the still the new, like, I feel like that's where it's tough is like, okay, yeah, it was a hard season and we know, maybe that we could have gone farther, but we did everything and that we could as a team. And we were still there for each other at the very end. And I think that's kind of the important part is just to not quit, and not give up, but much easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the mm. nature of the business is that there's change, right? You know, players yeah. retire, players get traded, players decide they want to play somewhere else. And it's, you have to find the ways to separate that like personal relationship and friendship and, and like bond that you've, you've created with what's best for the team. Like the, you're here to, we're not, you know, sometimes it's show friends, but most of the time it's show business. You know what I mean? Like we're right. here to, you guys are here to win as a team and to win, you guys need to have strong bonds, but at some point it like might not, you know, a better place for someone is somewhere else. Or like I said, retirement, other things. Um, how do you how do you manage that when you have to separate from teammates or your that you maybe have created such a strong bond with? What's what's that like? 
Oh, it's difficult. Like, you know, I made a couple very good friends playing overseas that I felt like was hard to leave them just because they became so close so quickly. Um, and I feel like that was also a big adjustment is getting used to life without them. You know, I was with them and living with them for nine months every day. And now I don't have them anymore. Now that's a little bit tough, but it's just good to know that they're still there and I can, I still talk to them every day or as much as possible, you know, and it's just good to know that they're still there. Well, to kind of bring things a little bit full circle before we kind of wrap things up here, you know, do you, and I know you are still going through your journey, but like at this point, when you talk to younger, younger kids, you know, who have been adopted and maybe have gone through like similar life story as you, like what, what are the main things that you like to impart to them? What are the things that you, it, you know, you think are important for young adopted children to know? Yeah, I feel like the biggest thing for me has been to trust my gut. Um, and just to kind of understand that the things you are feeling are okay. And there's a reason for the things that you're feeling. And it's okay to talk about them. Um, and to just be you, like, figure it out, take, do the work to figure it out. Because I promise you, the journey of figuring it out is a lot better than being stuck and staying mad or upset about something. And people love you. There's people who love you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is okay to let people love you. Yeah. Birdies are the reason we get to have these conversations. And I'm, we're so thankful for that. Um, and if you want to rep that out in the streets, the Game Changer, which is a, a limited edition version of the Swift, um, is still available. It's got the Angel City colors. It's got the emblem. It's got it's got all this stuff on it. Um, and when you're wearing it, we, we like the idea to think that people feel empowered and inspired. So those are still available. Go to birdies.com, angelcity.com, or even go in person to one of the stores. Um, there's one right here in Abikini in, in Venice. Um, we we want people to know about that. And we're so thankful for Birdies for helping us have these kinds of conversations. Um, as, we, as we wrap up, any final thoughts? Like, is there something we haven't talked about that you want to get out there? Or is there some message that we've already said that you just want to drill into people's minds as they walk away? What's what's the final thought for today? I think the final thought really is just that family is what you make of it. And family does come in all shapes and sizes. Um, and trust people. Let people in. Accept it. Accept the help. I think that's excellent. What... Um, as we say goodbye, what what can we what's going on with you? What can we promote? How do people stay on top of what's happening in with everything in May? Oh. Hmm. Well, I am thinking about starting a, a podcast of my own. So if there are any suggestions of things that people want to hear, um, let me know. Follow my Instagram, Emmy Vignola with two A's at the end. Um, but yeah, let me know. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. I will say that the days thank I get you. to see you and I get a flash of an MA smile, it always just makes my day so much brighter. <laughs> a smile you too. Oh, that, you. That, that's just like all, I don't need coffee. That's all. I just need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty. I got plenty to pass around. Um, but thank you. Um, hope this was helpful for everyone today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you guys yeah, again next time. Yeah, it was time. so fun. That was a good one. Bye.